River Wild is a micro solitaire game. Everything in the game will fit inside this plastic wallet, and everything that you see here is this is the whole game with a, uh, a player aid, a starting card, a deck of cards, and a rule sheet. The purpose is to score as many points as possible, and in order to do so, we're gonna create a magical river. Possibly in Barbie land or adjacent to it because the river is pink. We always have that starting card there that always goes on the table uh, during setup and that's the only thing you do. You place that card, shuffle the cards and you're ready to go. Then you give yourself a hand of three cards like here. These cards are double sided but they have exactly the same illustration and pattern just mirrored. And each card will feature a section of the river, some land, uh, an animal, and then a scoring emblem, should we call it? A scoring section. So that tells you uh, what scores, but the animals are what you use in order to fulfill those requirements. You see that there are two numbers there. Uh, what you will score is islands that are completed, that are sealed, surrounded by rivers and, and, and from all directions. Um, and the game gives an incentive to create many of them, not just to create a single ginormous one, because you see those two values. In the largest land that you will have, you will score the lowest value. So all of the emblems in the largest land will score the, val the lowest value. All of the other lands will score the higher value. So again, gives an incentive to spread out and create multiple, what they're called protected lands. Now, during your turn, what you do is you take a card and you attach it to the landscape, of course, moving from the source and expanding out. It is okay if something touches the void, but when cards touch each other, then river has to match river and land has to match land. And so, for example, there would be another legal placement. Uh, and then say I place something like that, and then I place this, they look like legal placement. Um, also, mountains, mountains can touch anything, they can touch land or they can touch river, no problem there. Uh, and I'm playing again kind of randomly, so this would be an illegal placement because land there is touching is touching river. I'm allowed to leave gaps uh, but it's not necessarily a good idea because then I cannot close a land if there is a gap there. And suppose that this would be the case actually what you have there is a single ginormous <laughs> ginormous protected land. And again as I said you usually will want to keep a mix of different of different things. So that's the idea. Oh no, actually that is two separate lands. This would be one because the mountain separates it and that would be another one. Still pretty terrible because suppose this is the end of the game, then I'm looking at my protected lands. I have two, I have a small one and a large one. And so this would score the lowest value. Also, I'm not scoring anything because I get two jackalopes and this emblem would give me uh, points if I have a frog and a dragon, which I don't. That one, unicorn and frog, which I don't. So it almost looks like placing cards randomly is not such a great idea. Uh, this has two animals and no scoring emblems. Now you see some of these rune stones uh, that are on some cards. They allow you, they count as a wild animal for, uh, for the lands adjacent to them. But again, playing randomly, my things is just so terrible, it doesn't even... It doesn't even matter. And so you will score stuff as such, uh, certain combinations of animals, uh, one of each, uh, any five, there is a card that says any five, and so on and so forth. You also may have noticed, even from my pathetic random placement, that the trade-off is that uh, in most cases half of the card is not used, because uh, half of the cards very often will be facing the void. Uh, if you start the setting cards, uh, you get to expand things a little bit more. And so now there may be cards uh, that are surrounded by, by other cards. So you use every part of the card. But 
in many cases, half of the card is gone. So basically, in many cases, your choices, you have to choose which part of the card is actually activated. So the idea is very simple. Create uh, islands uh, as a number of them, not just one ginormous island. Create a number of islands that to contain both scoring emblems and the animals you need to actually score them at the end of the game you look at all the islands that you completed and you score you score points booyah just so that you see actually i would be able to score that one thanks to the magic runes that count as wild so for example i count that as being a jackalope then I can complete that one. I can even complete that one because I got the unicorn and the jackal out that way. I get that one to count as the frog and uh, then I score that one. Uh, depending on, again, how big the other islands are, that will tell me if uh, I was able to score that, uh, the bigger number or the smaller number. So the mechanism is very simple. The dilemmas, however, very tough. Almost every card, you need to give up half of it. I like games with big dilemmas. However, I find that here the dilemma is very tough and the economy is so tight. And there is just the big random element because I got three cards and I may just not have any good options. There are no, there's no recourse there. There's no special ability. There is no mitigation. It just so happened recently I played a game by the same publisher with the same philosophy from the same designer. Uh, that also has a random element, but has a lot of more mitigation. You have special actions you can do to offset the limited selection. So, actually, so that it's clear, I still enjoyed this game. It's just that maybe since I played it right after a game that I enjoyed a lot, this one felt a little less exciting. Uh, it's perfectly viable little puzzle if you have 10 minutes uh, before your next meeting uh, and you played your lunch game uh, that ended... Uh, that end a little earlier and you still have 10 minutes for your lunch break you don't want to waste those so you play this micro mini game if you have it around it's a perfectly legit and fun little puzzle but sometimes i did find myself feeling frustrated because uh, the economy is so tight the placement rules are so uh restricting that um I found that the random element left with me no good choice. And so sometimes I did well. No, no, not really. Sometimes I did very poorly. Sometimes I did only poorly. But I felt that the best times in which I did only poorly, I, that wasn't really driven by a lot of, of strategy. But some strategy and just, and just luck. So, uh... It looks cute, it looks nice uh, for 10 minutes if this is around and there are no other 10 mini games available, this is perfectly fine. But I feel that even in the in the category of you know micro solo games, uh, this is probably not the best. There are games that give you more options and less luck. And this one looks nice, looks neat. It's just a little too tough and sometimes frustrating when you consider the limited choices you have and the amount of luck that there is.